Okay, let's do one more for the road. The final pre-summer MP panel has been convened from across this country. James Rajad is a conservative MP from Edmonton. He was the co-host of the show last week, you may recall. Robert Chisholm is an NDP MP from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, and he's in Halifax. Ralph Goodale, Liberal MP from Wascana, Saskatchewan, linked to us from Regina. Gentlemen, unless it's been reversed by the Supreme Court, there's not going to be any using of deceased federal gun registry data to launch a Quebec version. Robert, the data is old, mm. obsolete. It was collected by the feds. Did the court make the right call? Well, I, you know, I'm disappointed. I think we're disappointed that the uh, federal government decided to uh, uh, to take the Quebec government on in this. Uh, taxpayer pay, taxpayers paid for this data. Um, if the Quebec government or any other provincial government, frankly, thinks that this data will help them protect citizens, uh, help keeping communities safe, then uh, we don't see why the federal government got involved in it. Uh, because let's be clear, that's the ultimate goal, should be the ultimate goal of of uh, what we're doing in this respect is uh, is making sure that we control uh, access to guns and that we make sure that uh, uh, that people in in our communities are safe and that uh, lawful gun owners and gun users users are not uh, are not persecuted uh, and we can best do that if we know what's going on out there. Okay, Robert or uh, Ralph Goodell, your party collected the data and started the gun registry. I suspect you think they should preserve it and reuse it. Why? Well, we'll see what the uh, what the courts ultimately say. This was a this was a decision of the Quebec Court of Appeal, and it sounds like the uh, the Quebec government uh, will take this to the Supreme Court of Canada. The Supreme Court will have to decide first of all whether they'll hear the case, uh, and if they do, then then ultimately determine the uh, the issue. So uh, the courts are not done with this yet, and we'll see where it uh, where it ultimately goes. Uh, I think what this demonstrates, though, is a is a sadly dysfunctional relationship between. Uh, the federal government and at least the government of Quebec and perhaps several other governments in the in the country there have been disputes not just about the the gun registry issue but also about employment insurance about pensions about health care about job training about infrastructure uh, you've got a situation here where uh, the government of Canada has a grave amount of difficulty getting along with other duly elected governments in the country uh, and that leads to uh, a great many inefficiencies in the way the country runs you would think an argument about data might be resolved by a discussion among ministers rather than uh, going to the uh, the extreme of, of court proceedings but it seems that that's the state of federal provincial relations in Canada today okay well uh, James Rajat I'd like to hear your thoughts on that and the use of this red or the the fact that this data cannot be used by Quebec anymore at least till the court of it still reaches the Supreme Court well I certainly think the Quebec Court of Appeal made the right decision on this matter I mean, the fact is that we've promised each and every election to Canadians from coast to coast, regardless of which province they live in, that we would end the, the long gun registry because it's, it's proven to be ineffective. It's proven to be incredibly wasteful in terms of taxpayer dollars. It does not, in fact, uh, protect Canadian citizens. It did not fulfill that public safety requirement whatsoever. So we've committed each and every election. I've run five times and run on that platform. That was a commitment we made to Canadians. We fulfilled that by introducing Bill C-19. and so. Obviously, we expect that that law, once it was passed by both the House of Commons and the Senate, that it would be respected from coast to coast and within all the provinces. And the people in Quebec who obviously supported that and gave us a majority of government as well believe that that's what should have happened. So I think the Quebec Court of Appeal made exactly the right decision. I'm curious what you have to fear about it, though. I mean, the data is just given to the Quebec authorities. Let the province decide whether Quebecers want it or not, and they can vote out the provincial government, if you will. You've done your due diligence. James, what's the fear? I mean, I just don't understand why you can't give but, it to but, them. But, but Don, the issue, the issue is it's, it was a matter of federal jurisdiction. And in fact, this was, this was proved in the argument on the previous piece of legislation. So it is federal jurisdiction, federal power, and that's, in fact, well, I think the Quebec Court of Appeal ruled the way it did today. So I think it's important as well that, I mean, if, if you're going to do away with a, a registry, obviously keeping data that's, that's old and, in fact, and was proven in a previous system is, is the data that was there in the first place was not very reliable whatsoever. So to keep old data in place, I mean, what would actually be the point of that? And, and yeah, because it is yeah. a federal jurisdiction, I mean, we think that the Court of Appeal made the right decision here. Okay, a I lot of that data you know, is... You make, you, Go ahead, Robert. Don, 
Don, I'm just going to say, you, I mean, you make a good point. Um, you know, they made a commitment, uh, like it or not, on the uh, gun registry. Uh, the gun registry is gone. Now, why are they going after a provincial jurisdiction on the data? You know, let the provincial jurisdiction, taxpayers have already paid for the data. Uh, let the, that provincial jurisdiction, if they decide uh, that they want to try to, to, to use it, to see how they can uh, use that data to best uh, protect uh, communities and citizens, uh, let, them, let, them, uh, let them do that. Why continue to use taxpayers' dollars uh, to punish uh, a, a provincial government in this case? If the government were truly concerned about uh, gun safety and about uh, protecting communities, they'd do things like um, ending the, 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 the hundreds of millions of dollars they're cutting from border security that, uh, uh, that could be used to prevent uh, guns from coming in from the U.S. Uh, but unfortunately, okay. they're uh, continuing to, pan this, uh, to pound this ideological drum. I want to quickly switch gears to another topic. Uh, an interesting uh, event happened today. Our first new Chinook helicopter was delivered, albeit five years after the government initially thought they would deliver it. We're still waiting for those Sikorskis to replace the Sea Kings, um, yet the government says this is a big win for military procurement. Uh, Ralph Goodell, I'd like your thoughts on whether this is a sign that we're finally starting to get new equipment or that it's just, you know, we're seeing these things dragged out a lot past the deadline for delivery. Well, uh, the latter is the case, uh, Don. It's interesting. The announcement of the purchase of the Chinooks was seven years ago tomorrow. Uh, and finally, uh, after seven years, one of the 16 is, uh, is, being, is being delivered. Uh, the, the procurement process was, uh, was pretty messed up. It went for a number of years without any details, without any specifications. The Auditor General at one point said the process was not open, fair, or, or, uh, or transparent. And that kind of a comment has been made by the Auditor General or the, or the Parliamentary Budget Officer or other watchdogs on this file about the, uh, the uh, procurement of the infantry vehicles, about the search and rescue fixed wing uh, aircraft, uh, about the F 35s, most definitely. The procurement process of this government from day one uh, has bungled project after project after project, uh, and one helicopter delivery uh, does not a successful procurement make. Okay, James, I guess it's a beginning, is it? <laughs> well, I, Ralph, come on. I mean, you're, you're going to lecture others in terms of military procurement, given your record in government? I mean, that, I mean that's just a little bit rich. I mean, the fact is, we have these 15 uh, Chinook helicopters. We're very proud of them. In 2006, when the process ultimately started, there was you no You have one, identifiable. not 16. There, there's 15 that, that are going to be uh, procured under this, Ralph. And it, the process actually, if you look at it, it really started in 2009. So we've actually fulfilled it in a fairly short period of time. But in terms of re-equipping the military, there's been more re-equipping of the military since 2006 than there has been perhaps in any other period of history other than in perhaps during the severe wartime periods of World War I and World War II, Ralph. I mean, this, this, this government has made a, a serious commitment to ensuring that our men and women have the tools that they need regardless of whether they're fighting overseas or, regard, or whether they're, at, in fact, assisting uh, Canadians in their homes in, in areas like southern Alberta. We are ensuring that they have the tools needed to do the job. And with respect to procurement, this is always a very challenging file, but I think this particular one, in fact, if you go from 2009 on, shows that it was done within a very short timetable. Robert Chisholm. <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, there's... If Canadians were listening to the show, and we hope they are, Don, at least to listen to you, um, you know, what they're going to hear is, from the Liberals and Conservatives, is you can't do procurement in this country without bungling it. That is under the Liberals and Conservatives. I mean, five years uh, since we were supposed to get delivery. The sad thing is, not only are we talking about hundreds of millions of taxpayers' dollars that are being wasted, but the women and men uh, who depend on, on working with this equipment, with this necessary equipment, are going without, are having to make do with, with older equipment that is, uh, that is not, you know, in many cases, not up to doing the job. And we've got some serious requirements, not only around the world, but in Canada for, uh, for the military, uh, for the maritime helicopters, for example. Um, in terms of uh, search and rescue, uh, right across the country, up north, um, you know, can this government, uh, you know, bring a procurement, uh, you know, in on time? 
uh, and in on budget. Well, they certainly haven't shown that they can do that now, and it doesn't do any good to blame the, to blame the Liberals. Uh, you know, it's time this government started to give us some answers. Why they aren't, they aren't up to the job, right. why they continue to screw up these major procurement contracts uh, that are so important to Canadians. On that happy note, we're out of time. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you in the fall. Thanks, Don. We'll Coming do. up.